So I just have kind of a short uh, piece, and I'm at the preliminary stages of the project, so it's kind of more conceptual. Um, part of what I'm thinking about is <coughs> at the end of the film that we saw last night, uh, the message was if we get this message out and tell people about what's happening, then you know maybe something will shake loose. And I'm sort of thinking about what are the conditions under which everyone can know about this, but nothing can really happen at all. And so what are the conditions under which uh, this can be widely publicized, the genocide, but then FDI still grows in mm -hmm. Myanmar or what have you. So I'm going to focus on uh, kind of the concept of crisis and what that does uh, politically. So the presence of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh brings together humanitarian uh, discourses and climate discourses uh, through the mediation of the concept of crisis. And when we put uh, crisis into question, I think we can see uh, a way to reconsider relationships among politics, state, and forms of order that are outside of the state. So like other stateless people anywhere, the Rohingya are a living symbol of the failure of the international political system of nation states to define the actual world. It's significant in this respect that the crisis is not generally referred to as the Myanmar crisis, but as the Rohingya crisis, suggesting that the Rohingya themselves constitute the problem. This designation suggests that the crisis exists not in the violence and dispossession experienced by Rohingya, but in the fact that certain events have forced an unmarked us to contend with the question of what ought to be done with refugees who suddenly demand our attention and resources. Uh, an immense amount of work in social science has already been uh, done on the tension between the universal category of the human on the one hand and the particular category of the nation on the other. But the specificity of the Rohingya crisis cannot be apprehended simply as a failure of 1945 political order. Paying, a uh, paying attention to the concept of crisis and its effects uh, makes a nation-state-oriented conceptualization of stateless people inadequate uh, because the crisis concept is everywhere. Uh, Joe Masco defines crisis as an affect-generating idiom which seeks to mobilize radical endangerment to foment collective attention and action. Janet Reitman in Anti-Crisis rightly argued that crisis is the most common and most pervasive qualifier of contemporary historical conditions, leading to a paradoxical state of enduring crisis. And this kind of gets at what Naveen Rashid said in her presentation <coughs> of the uh, permanent state of exception. The affective politics of crisis in which all problems are denominated in crisis justifies drastic emergency actions and blurs boundaries between issues which become combinable, com comparable, and hierarchizable. In the context of Bangladesh, I'm most in interested in the way the crisis fuses the discourses of humanitarianism and environmentalism and the security strategies that emerge from their conjunction. Uh, the coincidence of humanitarian discourse with environmental discourse makes possible various uh, hybrid security mechanisms, uh, one of which, I think, probably the most frightening of which, is the plan to relocate 100,000 refugees uh, from Kutupalong camp to uh, Pashanjar, which is, as most of you know, a small silt island in the Bay of Bengal. The shore is roughly 30 kilometers from the coast west of Chittagong, and until quite recently it wasn't even there at all. Uh, it was more of a sandbar. It was only above the surface of the water at certain times of the year. Uh, since the crisis uh, intensified in 2017, uh, the Bangladesh government, along with Sino Hydro, which is a Chinese engineering firm that built the Three Gorges Dam, among other things, mm -hmm. and H.R. Wallingford, which is a British uh, hydro engineering company, uh, have worked to stabilize this land and make it safe and habitable. They built a what is right now a three meter high uh, embankment 
which is soon to be raised to seven meters, to protect against storm surge, and built a wave break ringing the entire island, a small wall that is just above the surface of the water, in order to protect against erosion. Uh, there are plans right now to install a really sophisticated drainage system using technology that was developed in Singapore. Uh, nevertheless, it's far from clear that the island is so-called safe for habitation, as the UN rapporteur uh, recently visited and said she questioned whether the island is truly habitable, but urged the government not to relocate refugees without further study out of fear that it would create a, quote, new crisis. Uh, the Bashanchar plan has provided a site to practice and experiment with these kinds of climate adaptation technologies uh, while offering the prospect of a seemingly easy, easy solution to the Rohingya crisis. But even if these technologies succeed in making the island habitable, the refugees that volunteer to move or that are forcibly moved will find themselves on what amounts to a floating prison. Uh, theoretically, I think this situation raises three questions. First, there's the relationship between the state and the natural environment. Classical political theories more or less unanimously took for granted the stability of the Earth system uh, as a background for human political relationships. Uh, we might say that these systems, po politics and uh, the environment, were not understood to be in communication, whereas today the crisis acts as a kind of conceptual technology linking the environment to the state and vice versa. Even political theories that insist on the significance of uh, <coughs> territory or, or geography, from Hegel to Schmidt, take the, those formations as basically independent variables. As Schmidt argued, the Earth contains a, quote, inner measure, which naturally divides human groups into political communities based on unique, quote, forms of life. Thus, he recognized the historically specific nature of the system of nation states and its integral relationship with the technological capabilities of dividing and traversing space. But notice the way that Schmidt's thesis of land's inner measure is transformed in the Anthropocene context as evidenced by the Pashanchar plan. Schmidt's political anthropology theorized firm land providing the basis for distinct, territorially delimited human communities. In the Anthropocene, land itself is tenuous, while the political communities, which emerged at a specific historical moment through a uh, technological relationship with territory, actually lose their concreteness and become transcendent identity categories. When land is understood to be tenuous, but identities are not, it might make sense uh, in a crisis to make more land rather than question the identity. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, the relocation plan should make social scientists, particularly anthropologists and geographers, reconsider the kinds of Foucauldian notions of security and risk that uh, we've used, especially to problematize neoliberalism. Vital system security, supply chain security, critical infrastructure security have been useful for making sense of globalization's uh, different spatial mechanisms for the exercise of power over life. Uh, but Pashan Char plan, plan seems to reconstitute an archaic technique of spatial segregation. And it's not alone in that. We see that more and more. Uh, just as globalization disaggregated flows of people, goods, and capital, the ubiquity of crises has meant uh, rapid changes in circulations involving Bangladesh. The Rohingya crisis has brought huge numbers of NGO and aid workers to Cox Bazar, which is a constant source of discussion, uh, especially among middle-class Bangladeshis. And this has meant new circulations of crisis dollars and crisis euros. Mm -hmm. But the relocation project also engenders a new circulation of climate adaptation knowledge and skill as technologies are tested to keep the island above water. Uh, this constitutes, I think, the most important ethical and political question of the relocation project. So lastly, uh, the relocation plan implicates the relationship between politics and the state. For John Dewey, the vital political question was locating the distinction between the public and private the public being composed of all those who directly or indirectly feel the consequences 
of the actions of others. This means that there's not a, just a generic public, but that particular publics come into being with particular issues. To me, this is a useful way to think about the ethics and politics of the Hush on Char plan, because it provides a possibility of uh, delimiting channels for action without resorting to crisis narratives. Consider that Bangladesh, particularly its coast, is often said to be on the, quote, front lines of climate change. This phrase implies that it will be one of the first areas to undergo catastrophic changes, of course. But to say that is also to say that Bangladesh's coast is located in the future. It will experience something before most of the rest of the world. And to me, this recognition makes the Hashanchar plan highly suspect, as if refugees are being mobilized as sorts of guinea pigs for testing out survival methods that eventually we will all need to deploy. They're being integrated into a public that is without any say in its organization. Uh, whether or not that's a fair assessment, we need to develop techniques for integrating Rohingya and refugees in general into our political publics. And one such technique will be to avoid the kind of political entropy that results in the aggregation of all political issues into a mega crisis uh, in which it becomes impossible to act.